From the six most common fire extinguishers available in Australia, which one should you carry in your electric car and why? Stay with us to find out. Welcome to Electric Car Australia, and it's, it's your first time joining the channel. Thanks for visiting. Here we'll talk about electric vehicles, sustainable living stuff, and generally have a great time. So if you're into that sort of stuff, please click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we upload a new video. And look, if you're after some specialist one-on-one -on -one advice, please visit our website. We'll include a link below in the show notes. And we're more than happy to book a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you and we'll answer all your questions on electric vehicles. So just as an opener, I want to say that I'm not a fire expert, so please treat this video as general advice only. And it's our opinions and thoughts on what we personally believe. If you need specific fire advice, please seek that from a specialist. So as I mentioned today, we're going to have a quick look at the six main types of extinguishers available in Australia. Also the different types of fire classifications they are and the type of extinguisher that I chose to put in our EV and the reasons for that. So we've probably all heard the headlines, EV bursts into flames and burns to the ground. So look, they make great headlines and these are global headlines. When a, a Tesla catches fire anywhere in the world, it's on front page news all over the place. But the fact is that electric vehicles in electric cars are far less likely to catch fire than a internal combustion engine, so i.e. petrol or diesel. Uh, Elon Musk famously said that a Tesla is 500 times less likely to catch fire than a petrol car, and he appears that he's pretty much on the money. So if you're driving an EV or thinking about an EV, um, the high voltage battery pack bursting into flames is probably the, one of the least things you need to worry about. And I feel safer driving our electric car around than I do our diesel car. So just briefly to touch on those headlines, lithium ion battery fires are very hard to put out. So even though the chances of a high voltage lithium ion battery pack in a vehicle catching fire is extremely low, and it's actually getting lower as the technology improves. Um, we've got the new blade batteries um, coming out with some manufacturers and they're basically impossible to get to catch on fire. They've done multiple tests, they've drove nails through them and all sorts of stuff and they couldn't get them to ignite. Um, so things are getting better, but the reason you'll see the headlines is because if there's a thermal runaway in a battery, and the battery does catch fire, they're very, very hard to put out. The sheer amount of heat in the fires and they continue to reignite once they're put out. So that's the reason they make headlines, but the chances of it happening, very, very, very slim. So let's talk about the types of fires. So fires are classified with an alphabetical rating. So a Type A fire is wood, paper, or plastic fire. A type B fire is a flammable or combustible liquid, so that's your diesels and petrols. A type C category fire is gases, so flammable gases, LPG, that type of stuff. A category E fire is energized electrical, so that's where you've got arcs and sparks and a fire uh, starts from that. And a category F is oils and fats. So something you'd find in a kitchen or restaurant kitchen. Uh, you've got deep fryers and that sort of stuff. So they're your categories of fires. And that's important because you need to know what type of fire that you're most likely to be fighting so you can choose the right extinguisher. So now that we've had a look at the different types of fires, let's talk about the different extinguishers. And as I mentioned in the intro, there's six main extinguishers that are used in the Australian market. This might be slightly different around the, the world, um, but the six in Australia, and the good thing about some fire extinguishers is they're multi-purpose. So they can be used on different types of fires, because as you'd imagine, in an electric vehicle or any vehicle for that matter, you don't necessarily know in advance which fire you're going to be tackling because uh, it could be the explosion of the fuel, it could be a, a plastic fire, uh, there could be um, a small fire on the side of the road that you, you, you're putting out with um, grass or, or paper, etc. So it's good to know that some extinguishers do multiple different fires. 
So the different types of extinguishers you can get are water extinguishers, foam extinguishers, dry powder extinguishers, carbon dioxide extinguishers, wet chemical extinguishers, and a vaporizing liquid extinguisher. Now I won't go into all the details of those today because that's not the purpose of the video. I'll put a graphic in there which shows the different types of extinguishers and how to identify them, so i.e. What, what they look like. But the one we're going to talk about today is a combination extinguisher and it's the ABE extinguisher. And you can tell an ABE extinguisher, it's red in colour with a white band. Now these are probably the most popular fire extinguisher in Australia and the reason is that they're a multi-purpose extinguisher. They do fire type A's which is your wooden paper, they do fire type B which is your flammable and combustible liquids and they also do fire type E which is your energized electrical. So you've probably guessed it, this is the fire extinguisher that I carry around in our EV, the MGZS. And it's also the one that I carry in our diesel station wagon as well. And I've got a few of these dotted around the house. And the reason being is because they are that multi-purpose and you never know which type of fire. So they're the most practical, common, and I guess useful extinguisher. So we'll go through why I chose this one. So obviously the battery, the main battery under your EV is a really high tech piece of gear very, very energy dense. And these are the sensationalist headlines that you see on the news. And if in the very rare event, your high voltage battery catches fire in your EV, very debatable whether these extinguishers are going to actually put it out. Ironically, normally you don't put water and electricity together, but from the general information I've been able to uncover, Fire brigades generally use water on an EV fire as a long-term suppressant because the problem with battery electric vehicles and lithium-ion batteries is they're very hard to put out. So if you get thermal runaway, the amount of heat in those batteries just keeps igniting the battery. So you might put it out, you turn your back and it'll reignite. So just continually flooding them with water appears to be the best, um, best method to, to keep them under control. But keep in mind, when you're traveling in your EV or even your normal fossil fuel vehicle, you're not necessarily always going to be worrying about your high voltage battery um, catching fire. The chances of other fires, either in your vehicle, somebody else's vehicle, side of the road, etc., or you might even be passing a building or something, is far higher than your high voltage battery actually catching fire. So therefore, this is the most practical one to have. Um, so you might assist someone on the side of the road um, fighting another fire in their vehicle, a fuel lines burst, um, some hot fuel's gone onto an exhaust manifold or there's been a spark and it's caught fire. Um, so these are the ones to, to go for. So some other pros and cons on the ABE um, extinguisher. They are a dry powder. Um, they're not suitable for fats and oils, so you wouldn't use this extinguisher in a kitchen with a deep fryer, etc. But again, on the roads, you're not likely to run into that issue, so you don't need to worry about that. The powder can also blow away, so if you're actually using them in a really windy environment, so if you're trying to put a, um, a fire out in a, in a windy environment, um, make sure that you've got your nozzle as close to the fire as, as you can get and keep it at the base, um, uh, swishing it around but the wind will catch the powder and blow it away. And it will also blow the um, powder off once you've suppressed the fire. So again, if it's something that's likely to flare up again, just be aware of that, that it could blow the, the, the powder off. And they also can be quite messy. So if you're using them in a confined space, for instance, inside the cab of the vehicle, um, obviously you wanna make sure that there's nobody else in there, but just be aware that in a confined space, um, these are quite, quite messy and fluff the stuff around. So just looking at the sizes, so this little guy is a one kilo. Um, so I generally used to keep these in the car because they were the smallest sort of size you could, could get. Um, but I've actually gone away from that now and I've gone to the one and a half kilo um, because really one kilo is quite small. So you would have um, quite a small um, fire. And if you're trying to tackle a, a bit of a fire with this one, it's gonna run out quite quickly. So the extra one and a half kilo is, is a good size. Um, 
Then around home and in the workshop here, I've got a two and a half kilo. So again, a little bit bigger, a bit more capacity for um, fighting something in the, in the workshop. You might have a bit bigger fire. And I've also got one of these in the house and that comes with a, a, a bracket. Um, so again, bigger fire in the house. Um, you've got a, a four and a half kilo. So four and a half, two and a half, one and a half, one and a half and one. And they're probably the most common ones you'd have in, in a household environment. Just to give you some idea of prices, these ones, one kilo, around $20 at Bunnings, which is our um, local um, big hardware chain here in Australia. Be something similar um, in other places. Uh, one and a half kilos, that's about $32. This one's about 50 and this one's 90. So look, all in all, these are cheap insurance to have with you if um, a fire breaks out and you need to grab them quickly. And you'll see also up here, I've got another one mounted in the workshop. So I've got about half a dozen um, extinguishers dotted around the house in the workshop and I have one in each vehicle. So having extinguishers is one thing, but um, making sure that they're charged and ready to go is another one. So this is an old extinguisher I've had for years, and you'll notice the um, little yellow uh, dial there. That's down in the discharged section. So this guy here, um, you would not want to reliably um, grab this and hope to put a fire out. So. I'm assuming, and again, I'm not an expert, but I'm assuming this would still work a bit. However, the pressure's down and low, so it wouldn't meet the specifications. Um, this one here, obviously, reasonably new. You can see there it's in the green, so that's the safe. And these need to be in a commercial environment, um, tagged and tested regularly. Um, but in the domestic environment, um, it's really up to you to just buy them new and then keep an eye on them to make sure that they're in charge. Now look, one other thing I'll just mention in a vehicle, um, it's always a good idea to securely mount these. So you'll notice that this has got a metal mount on there that can be screwed on. Now I used to have a Ford F-150 and I had a couple of extinguishers in it. I had one screwed in the bed of the tray in the back and I also had one screwed in the passenger's footwell. Um, because believe me, the weight of these things, you don't want this flying around in an accident. If you roll your vehicle and you've got a fire extinguisher like this floating around loose and that clonks you in the head, um, fighting a fire will be the least of your worries. So do make sure you uh, secure them. Um, in the two vehicles I've got now, they're not actually secured secured, but they're both stored uh, in the boot right up the back. They're in a side pocket and they've actually got um, some shopping bags and a bit of weight sort of underneath them. Um, but there's no way, fingers crossed, that these could end up from the boot into the, the passenger cab. So yeah, really do make sure that you mount them or put some thought into where you actually locate them. You wanna be able to get to them quickly in an emergency, but you also don't want them rolling around loose at your feet. So that's it guys, just a short video. I hope that's been helpful. Um, just in summary, we, um, or I personally use the ABE extinguisher, which is the red one, white band. It's suitable for wood, paper, fires. It's suitable for uh, flammable liquid fires, and it's also suitable for electric fires. But again, don't expect to put your high voltage battery fire out if your EV um, on the, did catch fire because these guys are not gonna do that. But if you had a fire under your bonnet or um, uh, another vehicle that you were helping out, these are the best general purpose fire extinguisher to have. If you have been, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Please leave your comments and suggestions in the comments field. As I mentioned before, if you haven't, please click the subscribe button. It really helps uh, the algorithms in YouTube. We share the video to more people, which helps us get out there. We're heading towards of our 1,000 subscribers, which is fantastic. Um, so everyone that is a subscriber, I really appreciate your support. And we've got some fantastic regulars that uh, comment and we look forward to more suggestions for more videos. I do have a huge backlog of stuff that I uh, wanna do, unfortunately. I just uh, struggle to get the time to, to make them. But stay tuned, we've got some great videos coming up, as I mentioned, our second video in our battery charging feature. Um, we've got a great little project that we've recently finished. Um, 
about powering gear while we're camping that I um, will bring you guys and heaps more stuff. So stay with us, hit that bell icon so you're notified when we have more videos and stay safe. Cheers.